Chapter 8, Uses for Your Recorder. You've mentioned quite a few uses for my recorder, like recording from radio and television, voice and music recordings and the like. What are some other uses for it, Frank? If I tried to tell you all of the uses for a recorder, Bob, I'd still be talking this time next year. But there are some uses that I've come across that I think are quite interesting. For example, I have a wife who is interested in antiques, uh, other than myself, <laughs> and uh, she can ferret out an old music box like nobody's business. So we take the recorder along to antique shops and I record the music boxes while she spends my money. Let me play a little bit for you. You have a natural use, Bob. Your color slides and home movies. You'd enjoy both of them more if you had a soundtrack for them, wouldn't you? Say, that's right. You know, I'm ashamed that I didn't think of it. But how would I do it? Well, I'd suggest you do it this way. First, list all of the slides or movie scenes, and then write a script for each of them and record it on tape. For movies, your script should be timed to cover each scene, and you should bridge the gap between scenes with music. That way, you won't need exact synchronization. If you want musical background for your commentary, add to it by having the phonograph playing while you're recording your voice. You bring the music up to a higher volume level between your comments, like this. One of the sights we enjoyed most while cruising on the river Partway down the river, we saw this unusual boat. And now, one of the most beautiful sights of all, the sun setting just as we round the river bend. Gee whiz, that's great. Well, I'll tell you something that's even greater. If you have an automatic slide projector, VM has an automatic slide projector synchronizer. This is an accessory device that will trip your slides in sequence from a signal on the tape. This way, the tape recorder can put on the whole show for you while you sit back and enjoy the show without lifting a hand. You know, I've preserved a lot of wonderful memories that way, Bob. Let me play this bit of tape for you. To me, it's priceless because one of the singers is my daughter, Nancy. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. You should have a sound history of Bobby's growing up. It'll be a real treasure to you later. Another thing, your recorder will actually help you in child training. Nothing stops tantrums or arguments so quickly as a recording of the misbehavior played back to the youngster afterward. When the children hear themselves in these situations as others hear them, they start giggling, but they get the point and they stop acting that way. Well, is there a, a right technique for recording the kids' voices? Well, there are some good recommendations. It's usually best to keep the mic hidden from them. They're more relaxed and natural when they aren't aware of what's going on. You can place the mic by the bed to catch good night prayers, for instance, with a recorder running in another room. Conceal the mic beside the bed. The same technique can be used by concealing the mic near them while they're playing. When it's time for birthday parties, each guest can be recorded. The best way to do this is interview style, you know. Be sure to mention each youngster's name and age. Ten years from now, when Bobby's falsetto squeaks turn into basso profundo blasts, you'll have a hard time connecting the two. It'll be hard to believe that 
This young man was once your little boy soprano. You know, bedtime stories, too, on tape, can be a big help to the babysitter. And children's books read by you under the tape, with instructions when to turn the page, can save you hours when you're busy. Ideal for a rainy day listening, too. Just plug the headset or earphones into the external speaker jack and put the headset on the youngster. Then he can sit, turn the pages, and look at the pictures while listening to your voice. Of course, this isn't a substitute for a parent, Bob. The personal contact with a growing child is still mighty important. Well, I can see where the kids are going to enjoy my VM as much as I am. What about voice pondants you mentioned? Well, basically, voice pondants is corresponding by tape instead of by letter. Many people carry on family correspondence this way, you know, especially with members of the family who are in the armed services overseas. Voices from home and the familiar sounds are something that no written letter can ever really express. I know of one instance where the grandmother in California reads bedtime stories on tape in her home and sends the tapes to her grandchildren in the East. When the kids are tucked in bed, their mother turns on the recorder and they hear grandma's stories before going to sleep. Their mother says the kids are even anxious to go to bed. For a reply to grandmother, they simply record the family conversation at the dinner table and grandma listens into her little ones and it's almost like being with her family again. I have a friend of mine who just bought another recorder for his daughter away at school. They not only keep in touch with tape, but the recorder has been a tremendous help with the daughter's schoolwork and provides music for the whole dorm. Sounds like a lot of fascinating possibilities. Boy, there are. A number of international tape clubs have been organized by recorder owners, and you'll find members in almost every corner of the globe. They use three-inch reels because they carry a lot of recording at three and three-quarters speed, and they're easily mailed anywhere for just pennies. Incidentally, they have a regular organization. The yearly dues are small, and the club sends out bulletins as well as a directory of the members listing their particular interests. And this way, you can select someone with interests similar to yours and invite him to tape spawned with you. Some clubs are even specialized, like, uh, well, there's a club of organ music enthusiasts or the Bilingual Recording Club of Canada, which features both French and English. When did they begin all this, Frank? Well, the uh, first tape correspondence club was born, as I recall, back in 1950, and is still going strong. It's quite an experience to receive a tape from some distant land and talk with natives of a country thousands of miles from you. Well, how do I go about joining one of these clubs? No easier said than done. Drop a postcard to Tape Recording Magazine, Saverna Park, Maryland. That's S-E-V-E-R-N-A, Saverna Park, Maryland. They'll give you all the information that you want. Well, how about using the VM at parties? You know, hiding the mic and things like that. <laughs> Your recorder can be the life of any party that it attends. And that hidden mic trick, of course, is about the most obvious and the most commonly used. But, listen, Bob, common courtesy and respect for the feelings of others should always be considered in this type of recording. If you hide the mic to record conversations without others knowing it, play the recording back to yourself first. This way you're not going to ruin any friendships by revealing statements that someone thought were being made in private. As a rule of thumb, if everyone will enjoy it, fine. If not, don't use it. There's a better use for party fun, playing games. For instance, at children's parties, musical chairs is a great favorite. Just record some music from the radio or records and stop it now and then by turning the volume down all the way and letting the tape run without recording for a couple of seconds, like this. stops for the scramble of chairs are incorporated right in the tape and will still any cries of favoritism when the music stops and someone's in a good position to grab a chair. Oh, another angle, Bob. Record the theme songs of well-known bands from radio or television. Perhaps famous voices such as entertainers or political figures. Then have the guests try to identify them when you play the tape. If you really want to make it more difficult, record the music or theme songs at three and three-quarters speed and then play them back at seven and a half speed. This adds a lot more fun.
Another guessing game that's easily prepared is one where you record common sounds you hear around the house by holding the mic close to the sound source. Now, for example, here are five common sounds. How many can you identify? see. Well, the first was a telephone dial, and um, I'm pretty sure, uh, yes, the second was an egg beater. Yeah? Well, that third one's got me stumped, Frank. But the fourth one was a paper bag bursting, Yeah. and the last one was easy. That was a ping pong ball bouncing. How'd I do? <laughs> the four out of five gives you an extra slice of party cake, Bob. The one you couldn't identify was a match striking in the flare of the flame. Here's another guaranteed for lots of fun called Crazy Questions. Set the recorder up in another room away from the party group. Then the individual guests are invited to be interviewed by you. You explain that these are sidewalk interviews, but you don't explain that each guest will have totally different questions. For example, record a series of questions like this on tape. How do you do, sir or madam? This is your honest opinion reporter, and I have this question for you. The mayor and town council have been heaping praise on the building of the new intercity bridge. Madam or sir, what is your honest opinion of this project? Ha. Now, here's where the fun comes in. This question is already on the tape, but you don't ask it. You ask a loaded question orally and record the answer. For example, that old footbridge in the city park is reported as unsafe. What is your honest opinion? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. I've forbidden the children to walk over it because it's so rickety. Why, if the termites ever stopped holding hands, I bet the whole thing would collapse. And another thing, some of the boards are so loose, it's a wonder someone hasn't dropped right down through the cracks. If our city would settle down to some worthwhile projects, our city would be a safer and better place to live. Now, that's my honest opinion. <laughs> Can't you just see the expressions on their faces when the original questions and their honest opinions are played back? How do you do, sir or madam? This is your honest opinion reporter, and I have this question for you. The mayor and town council have been heaping praise on the building of the new intercity bridge. Madam or sir, what is your honest opinion of this project? It's a disgrace, that's what it is. I've forbidden the children to walk over it because it's so rickety. Why, if the termites ever stopped holding hands, I bet the whole thing would collapse. And another thing, some of the boards are so loose, it's a wonder someone hasn't dropped right down through the cracks. If our city would settle down to some worthwhile projects, our city would be a safer and better place to live. Now, that's my honest opinion. Oh, boy, that tops my list for a barrel of fun. And there are a lot of other things that are just as entertaining, Bob. The scavenger hunt. But you don't collect objects, you collect sounds. The idea is to have your guests take the recorders. It's best to have a couple of your friends bring their recorders out on the town to record specific sounds, such as a policeman talking on the precinct telephone or a cash register ringing or a bowling ball striking the pins, three different doorbells ringing, and, and so on. Of course, you set a time limit, and the group having the most recorded sounds will win. Another game that's a lot less strenuous but just as much fun is to have your guests become actors and actresses by recording an old-fashioned melodrama. You can either write the play yourself or pick up copies of booklets of one-act plays from the library or the bookstore. One of the group should handle the recorder, another the sound effects, and someone else act as director. And the idea is, of course, to ham it up all the way, and the cornier the better. Missed cues and sound effects in the wrong places all add up to a lot of fun. Well, if you have that much fun with a recorder, Frank, there must be a thousand and one creative applications, too. You know, I get a real thrill when I come up with, oh, a, a really beautiful photograph, especially in color. Couldn't the same sort of achievement be made in sound? It not only can be done, but it is being done, Bob. This field is in its infancy. So let your imagination be your guide. What we should try to do is to create pictures in sound. A written description is like the black and white photograph, but a description in sound is in vibrant color. You can make a sound picture of your own home, for instance. The leaky faucet, the slamming of the screen door, the birds outside, the dog barking, your wife humming a tune while working in the kitchen. These are familiar sounds and very much a part of the home that you live in. 
and they're so common that we don't often hear them. Sometime, when you're sitting in your living room, just close your eyes and listen for every sound you can hear. I'll bet you'll be surprised at the sounds that mean home to you. Is anything done professionally in this direction? Well, yes, to the extent that some pioneers, like Dr. Yushichevsky of Columbia University Music Department, have created tape recorder music by slowing or speeding the tape, making it repeat, altering tones, and passing the sound through filters. It gives you an idea of the wonderful things that everyone can do with a tape recorder. My wife agrees. When I told her we were going to own a recorder, she said, fine, now I can use it at church. What suggestions along this line, Frank? Well, since your wife sings in the choir, I'll bet she intends to record choir practice. This is a valuable use for a recorder. Makes it possible for the choir to hear itself and spot any improvement needed. Many churches have recorders busy during the services, too, recording the entire service from start to finish. The minister can then have the church secretary type his sermon from tape, and the tape can be played for shut-ins who couldn't attend the service. Because your VM recorder is so easy to operate, it's an ideal machine for this purpose. Of course, Bob, for social activities in the church, the recorder can supply any kind of music, and in Sunday school, it can be used to augment the lesson material or to play Bible story tapes. Oh, another use is to tape the piano accompaniment for hymns and then use this recorded playing of the piano in place of an actual piano and pianist. This is well suited where there are a few pianos and lots of Sunday school classes. Oh, and another wonderful use, Bob, is for blind people of all ages. While disc records are loaned to the blind by the Library of Congress, up-to-date materials such as newspapers and magazines and the latest novels can be read on tape for blind people. This is where you would use the slower or three and three-quarter speed because it's adequate for this purpose and it involves fewer changes of the reel.